Well, hi, everybody. I'm going to run through an example before your quiz tomorrow, and I have put this file, this is a PDF file, under Assignments. If you, so if you want to go to the headline and for some reason you wanted to copy this or have this for later, it's a little fuzzy on my where, where I printed it to my smart notebook. So anyway, go get that if you want. If not, you can just watch it. This covers everything that we have done, the, all the topics that are going to be on the quiz. I've got area and then a volume when we generate it around an axis. And I've also got cross sections that, that are, uh, are known shapes. So I've got A, B, and C here. We can see our region is defined above by the graph of y equals squared of x and below it is defined by e to the negative 3x and then on the right hand side we've got the vertical line x equals 1 and on the left hand side we've got their intersection point and I know a lot of you whenever you did this in class when you found their intersection point you graphed the two and calculated their intersection um, another thing that you can do is you can hit F2 and go to which is your algebra and you can go to solve and it'll open up parentheses and you type in the square root of x equals e to the negative 3x comma x and close parentheses from the home screen and that's going to tell you um, wherever they intersect which I believe is only in one place <clears throat> anyway since that's very important I'm going to go ahead and write down what that is this is point two three eight seven three four and I'm going to take that out as far as I want to but definitely further than three decimal places because that's not my answer I'm just going to be using that we'll only round at the end so let's get after this question I first of all have to find the area of R and this is fairly straightforward um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a sample cross-section and we're going to just find that distance and we're going to integrate that so let's take a look at that let's get, get a little cross-section here Okay, so there's my cross section. And all I need to do is I just need to find what that distance is. You know, what is this distance? And we talked in class, this is top minus bottom. So the top graph is square root of x, and the bottom graph is the e to the negative 3x. So this is going to be, for a, this is going to be my integral from the intersection point all the way out to 1. That's where we're going to let all of these cross sections range from. So we're starting at point two three eight seven three four and we're going all the way up to one and then we're going to have the top graph which is square root of x minus the bottom graph e to the negative three x dx so I'm gonna show this to my teacher and I'm gonna show this to the person grading my work this is what I'm putting in the calculator and then I'm going to type that in the calculator and this works out to be 0 0.442 or 0 0.443. It depends on how you rounded. But we definitely know to go three decimal places. Okay, let's go to part B. Part B is, what if we take that cross-section and we spin it around an axis? And in this case, our axis is going to be the horizontal line y equals 1. So we're spinning it around here and so the first thing we need to notice is when we take this region and we rotate it around this axis is that I need to use the washer method because there's a gap here and I need to identify what my outside radius and what my inside radius are going to be so my outside radius is what is the distance from the axis of revolution to what my hand would be touching if I was holding this object I'm not going, even going to attempt to draw this what it would look like but the e to the negative 3x part is, is is going to be the what what I would hold on to if I were to hold the shape and what is going to be cutting out the hole is this square root graph so this distance right here this distance from my axis of revolution to what I would be holding that's going to be my outside radius and that's going to be call, I'm going to call that my capital R of X and this distance is top minus bottom so that will be 1 minus e to the negative 3x that's how far it is from the line y equals 1 to e to the negative 3x top minus bottom my inner radius is going to be the distance from the axis of revolution to the graph that's carving out the hole and that is going to be 1 minus the square root of x 
very important to to uh, identify those before you start this. All right, so our washer method formula is volume equals pi times the integral from, again, we're letting our cross sections range from 0.238734 all the way up to 1. of outside radius squared and then minus, we're going to subtract off the whole, inside radius squared. And then I'm going to ask my calculator what that is and this works out to be 0.453 pi. Okay last part is imagine that this region is a base of a solid so this cross section up here is the base of a solid and for this solid each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is a rectangle whose height is five times the length of the base in the region R so the base of the rectangle is this part that's lying in region R and the height is five times that length that's coming up off the page so let's take a look at that rectangle go down just a little further This rectangle is taller than it is wide. And let's go back up to the picture and look at the length of the base. <clears throat> so what is the length of this base? Well, that's the same thing as in A. The length of this base is top minus bottom, or square root of x minus e to the negative 3x. And the height is 5 times that. So the area of this one cross section is length times width. So we get 5 times square root of x minus e to the negative 3x squared. That's what our area of our rectangle is. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to integrate that through the, the x values 0.238734 all the way up to 1. And so here's my setup. Integral 0.238734. 734 all the way up to 1 of the area of one cross section. I'm not spinning anything around any axis, it's just sitting there. So I don't need a pi or anything like that, dx. And this works out to be 1.554. Okay, I hope this was helpful and good luck on your quiz tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow.